Hi all. Today let's take a look at the join creation operators which are available in RSJS. So the join creation operators are basically creation operators which emits values from multiple source observables. So let's go to the RSJS official documentation and these are the listed join creation operators in the RSJS documentation. So let's go through each one of them and see how each of them work. This video is part of a series of videos which I will be creating based on the RSJS operators. So previously I had done the creation operators. So in case you have not seen that video, please go and watch it. I have provided the link to that video in the description. I have created an Angular 14 application in order to explore the various RSJS operators. So this is the playground application. So previously I had created the creation operators here. So today's video I have created a new tab called join creation and we will have the different join creation operators listed here and we will be going through each one of them. So first let's take a look at the combine latest operator which is a join creation operator. So the combine latest operator, as the name suggests, it combines the latest value from two or more observable input sources and combines them and emits as a single value. So let's go through an example which is provided in the RSJS documentation. So we have two streams here. One is the stream which emits the A, B, C, D, E and the second observable input is the one which emits the values 1, 2, 3 and 4. So these two observables we are passing as the input to the combined latest operator. So let's see what happens. So initially the first observable emits the value A. So at that time nothing happens. Now the second observable emits the value 1. So now what happens is that the combined latest combines the latest value from both these observables. So the latest value is A and 1. So that particular value is emitted when 1 is emitted. So the next value that is emitted is B. So now what it does is it will combine B and 1 which are the latest. So the value B1 is emitted and next 2 is emitted. At that time it combines B and 2 and B2 is emitted. Similarly, next 3 is emitted, B3, 4 is emitted, B4, but the next time C is emitted. So the combined latest will emit C4, then D4, and finally E4. So this is the way in which the combined latest operator works. Now let's explore this operator in our playground application. So I have created two observables. One is a timer which emits a value every one second and I am taking only the first five values and the second observable source is an interval. Again it emits every one second and I am taking only the initial five values. So these two observables I am passing to the combine latest. So there are two ways in which you can pass values. One, either you can pass it as an object with the name so that we will be able to identify the output from each of the observable. So initially I am passing it as an object. Now let's see what is the value emitted. So let's run one more time. So I am clicking on the combine latest. So you can see that initially 0 is emitted from source 1 and source 2. The next time 1 is emitted from source 1. So it combines 0 from source 2 and emits the value. Next the value 1 is emitted from source 2. So it combines the previous value 1 from source 1 and emits and likewise it keeps on going until the 5 values are emitted from both the sources. So the final value is 4 and 4. Similarly in case we pass an array 
the result is similar but instead of getting an object we will be receiving an array which has the similar values now let's explore the same instead of providing a timers we are going to pass two ranges so the first range starts from 0 and emits 10 values and the second input it starts from 10 and emits 10 values so when we go to the combine latest you can see that here actually the range since it emits all this value in a single stretch what happened is that from 0 to 9 actually no initial value was emitted because the second input observable had not started so what happened is that the initial 9 values are ignored by the combined latest then after that the second range starts emitting values at that time it combines the second emitted value with the latest from the first emitted value so 9 was the latest value which is emitted from the first observable so it is combined with each of the value from the second range so it is like 9 9 10 9 11 till 9 90 so only 10 values are emitted by the combined latest operator the next operator which we will be taking a look at is the concat operator so the concat what it does is so let's see this in action i have created another function the demo concat function what it does is it has two input observables one is the timer again which repeats every one second and emits five values and the second observable is the interval which is similar to the previous example so now what we are doing is we are passing both these observables as parameters to the concat operator so let's see what happens so i am going to click on the concat so what happens is that the concat operator initially it emits all the values from the first observable that is the timer so you can see that 0 1 2 3 4 are emitted and once the first input observable is completed then it starts emitting values from the second observable so basically it concatenates both these observable streams as a single stream and emits values from each of this but it will be doing it in a sequential way like first all the values from the first input is emitted then all the values from the second input is emitted so the next operator which we will be taking a look at is the for join operator so let's see what it does so once again we come to the rsjs documentation so here we have three of input observables which we will be passing as inputs to our for join so here you can see that the initial input it emits values from a to e the second one emits values from f to j and the third one emits value 1 to 4 so the for join what it does is it will take the last value that is emitted from each of these input observables and combine them and it will emit a single value which consists of all the latest values from the three input observables so in this case the last value is e here it is j and here it is 4 so the output which comes is basically an array which consists of e j and 4 so once this is emitted our operator completes so let's go to our playground and here again i have provided two timers one is a timer and the other is interval this will emit five values and here i am passing it as an object to the fork join so let's go to our application now you can see that no values being emitted till now when the five seconds are completed a single value is emitted with the latest value from both the input observables so we have the source 1 4 and source 2 4 similarly we can 
use the array notation as well. So in this case, the value will be emitted as a single array, which consists of the last value from both the input observables. So now let's see what happens in the case of a range. So here you can see that only the last value from each of the input observable is emitted. That is 9 and 19. So the next join creation operator is merge. So let's see what merge does. So here we have two input observables. One emits A to C and the second one emits D to F. So this, both these observables emit values at a different time interval. So this we are passing to the merge operator. Now what happens is that merge will actually merge both these streams in such a way that the values will be emitted like first A will be emitted and when D comes it will be emitted. When the next value from the first input comes it will be emitted and likewise. So A, D, B, E, C and F will be emitted. So it basically merges the two streams into a single one. So now let's see that in action. So here I have a timer and interval. Since I am using the timer from zero, what happens is the timer will be executed immediately. After one second only the interval will come. So there will be a small time delay between the two input observables. So we are merging both this and let's see it in action. So once I click on the merge, you can see that first zero is emitted from the first input, then from the second, then one is emitted from the first, from the second, and finally all these values are emitted. So this is the functionality of the merge operator. So all the operators which we saw till now, they basically joined together multiple input streams into a single one. But our next operator, that is the partition, it is different. So what it does is, is basically takes an input observable and splits it into two output observables based on some predicate. So here let's see this example. So we have a input stream which consists of six values. It emits from one to six. Now we are making use of the partition. So here we are passing a predicate that in case the value emitted is having a remainder as 1 when divided by 2, then that will be returned as the first stream. And in case this predicate is false, then the remaining values that will be emitted as a separate stream. So in our case, initially 1 divided by 2 leaves a remainder as 1. So it comes here, but 2 is an even number, it goes in the second stream, 3 will come here, 4 will go the second, 5 will come the first, and 6 will come in the second. So basically, we are splitting our input stream into two streams based on this predicate we have provided. So now let's go to our application. So here also, I have given the same thing. I have created a timer taking the five values. So basically I am passing this stream as an input to the partition and I am passing a predicate that the number should be even. So in case it is even it will be emitted in this matches stream and in case it is odd it will be rejected. So here I am subscribing to the rejected stream and I am logging the console as rejected value emitted along with the value and the matched value which is the even numbers I am passing it to the main component. So let's go to the partition. So you can see that the even numbers that gets displayed here in the template 
as well as in the value emitted console but the odd numbers will be having the console as rejected value so the partition operator is quite similar to the filter operator but filter just filters out the values based on the predicate but it will not be returning a rejected stream so in case of partition we will receive both a matching stream as well as a rejected stream the next operator is the race operator so in case of race operator we can pass multiple input observables as parameters and what happens is that whenever a particular stream emits a value that particular stream alone will be emitted and the other two streams will be ignored so in our example i have created two timers and i am passing both these as inputs to the race operator so the timer will be emitted first because it starts from the zero second and execute every second but the interval the value will be emitted after the first second so let's see this when i click on the race you can see that the timer emitted the value first and only the values from the timer is getting displayed or emitted as part of the race operation so the second input that is the interval is totally ignored similarly we can try it with a range operator so i am emitting two ranges starting from zero i am emitting 10 values second starting from 10 emitting 10 values so in this case since the in first input stream emits initially that is the starting from zero only that particular values will be emitted by the race operator the other range that will be totally ignored so the last join creation operator is the sip operator so the sip operator what it does is it accepts two or more input observables and it basically combines the inputs from each of these observables and emits it as a single value so here in this scenario again i have a timer and interval and each of them emit five values so i am passing both these as inputs to the sip now let's see what happens so here you can see that it combines the output that's a value emitted from both the observables and emits as a single list so here i am providing the input observables as a list so i receive the output also as a list so initially i have 0 0 1 1 2 2 3 3 and 4 4 and once the five values are emitted it stops emitting the output but one thing to note is that in case the number of values emitted from each of the stream is different so here in this scenario the first observable emits only five values and the second one emits seven so even in this scenario you can see that the sip emits only five values so in case the observables are not equal that is the values emitted from the observables are not similar then it will combine only the values which have the same number that is the initial five which is common for both the observables and the last two values will be ignored similarly you can try with the range operator here again you can see that the output values are joined together and emitted as a single value so it will continue till there is anything common between both the input observables so hope you are able to get a good idea about how the join creation operator works and what is their behavior so we will be continuing to look into other rsjs operators in the coming videos see you soon thank you